Hi there, welcome to a brand new episode of The Nation. My guest in the studio with me today is Teacher Raj Ritwan Singh, or otherwise known as T. Raj. He's the education revolutionist or founder and CEO of Souls 24-7. Welcome to the show, T. Raj. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning to you. How are you today? I'm okay. I'm yeah. okay. Well, we're really excited to have you in the studio today. We're going to talk uh, to all our audience, of course, about solar energy or solar power in Malaysia and what one NGO is doing to promote it via education as well. It's such an interesting topic. Um, let's first talk about Souls 24-7, of course, sure. which you have founded. Do tell us a little bit more about that. Sure. So, um, well, thank you once again for having us. Uh, and it's, it's really an honor for us to be here. And we do hope uh, we can share a bit about solar and what it's like for Malaysia and, and taking it forward. So a bit of history on Souls. Uh, Souls was founded uh, 16 and a half years ago mm -hmm. uh, by my uh, father, brother and I and we started in Cambodia and since then we've grown um, um, many countries um, and the whole idea of Souls was to be able to provide education to underprivileged youth Right. Um, and the focus, uh, why the focus on youth is because they are just about to enter the workforce and if not, uh, if there's no support given then they're really just going to struggle their whole life um, and we've always believed that um, to alleviate poverty the best and most efficient and cost-effective way is to provide the necessary skills and education to secure a job mm -hmm. um, and we focus on three key areas in the beginning so we're experts at teaching English uh, as a second language because English guarantees you a job literally anywhere in the world even in the US and the UK which are English speaking countries um, secondly on IT because IT uh, or technology is literally the 21st uh, century literacy. If you don't know how to use IT now, then you're literally illiterate in the in the workforce, right? Even mamak stalls use Absolutely. little tablets. It is to a tool, almost like a, a power tool that you can exactly. have. Exactly. Right? Every machine, every system, you know, it's all computer, uh, um, uh, uh, what's the word? Computer generated or computer... Work, you use, use powered, it powered yeah. sorry that's yes. the word yeah and the third one which was r what we realized uh, and which we think is the most important is so it's it's one thing ha helping a poor person get a job mm -hmm. but a lot of times they lose the job and the reason they lose the job is simply because they don't have the necessary character skills mm -hmm. right so so they don't understand the importance uh, um, of discipline. Now they know it, but understanding and knowing things are two different issues, right? And we realized that character development was a big issue uh, with a lot of these underprivileged youths. And, and it's simple, they come from challenging backgrounds. The reason they come from challenging backgrounds is this vicious cycle of poverty and challenges. And, uh, and they, they don't have the necessary right role models. Mm -hmm. You know, you almost never have the best schools in these rural or poor areas. So how do you expect them to, to have that, that model to come out of poverty? So they keep uh, getting stuck in the same rut. Exactly, mm -hmm. right? And when you need to survive, when you're hungry, you don't care about, you know, when, whether you're doing the right thing or whether it's good and whether it's, it's, it's religious or spiritual. You just go like, I need to steal to survive and I got to do it right now. Okay, um, well, we're going to take a quick breather at this sure. point. Uh, we'll come back shortly after this commercial messages. Do stay tuned. Hey there, welcome back to The Nation. We're talking about solar energy or solar power in Malaysia and what one NGO is doing to further promote uh, this through education. Of course, my guest in the studio with me is T. Raj, the founder and CEO of Souls 24-7. They live by the rules of serving, educating and empowering, right? Yes. Just before the break, we did speak about uh, how uh, Souls 24 is working with uh, a lot of those who come from un underprivileged backgrounds yes. and providing them with with the uh, knowledge as well as skills or tools um, and providing them job opportunities. Exactly. Um, so just to recap from the earlier part, I mean, at the end of the day, the whole idea of getting people the skills is also to ensure that they can keep the jobs, mm -hmm. right? And and character development, as I say, is really, really important, right? Like ask any parent, it takes 20 over years even to get the kids to make the bed. And even then it's, it's tricky. Um, so that's what we've, we've focused on, uh, our whole existence where we do the trainings and we do a lot of character development and that's why the name Science of Life, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and the whole idea is, is, it's funny, right, in school you're taught how to, to do math, English, geography, history and, and etc. But we're never really taught how to think, right? How do you rationalize and, and how do you decide, determine what is right, what is wrong? How do you develop the right attitudes and mindset? Um, and, and traditionally, you either leave it to, to religious organizations or 
you leave it to personal development coaches, uh, both of which not ne- not almost very rarely underprivileged youth connect with. Mm-hmm. Um, so we we saw the gap, um, and through that we grew massively. We we literally could help um, underprivileged kids uh, secure jobs within six to twelve months. And we started the program. So our signature program was always the Youth Development youth Center. Development. Mm-hmm. Um, and so initially we focused on English and, and IT. Uh, but recent times, um, IT has become so... I mean, even universities teach it these days. And even university kids with who graduate, they still struggle to get jobs in the IT industry. So um, a couple of years back, I was thinking, okay, so what's the next thing? Um, we don't do carpentry or motor mechanics because A, there are a number of people already doing it. B, um, unless you're in the big cities, it's not you're not able to generate a lot of income, right. right? So if you're in KL, yes, mechanics here are expensive. But if you're in small cities where most of our kids come from, like rural Pahang or Pera or stuff like that, or even Sabah, I mean, there are dime and dozen uh, um, uh, motor mechanics and carpenters and stuff like that, and there's no way you can compete. Mm-hmm. Um, so we bumped into solar, you know. And everyone always thinks, oh, solar, it's so expensive. Same impression, right? We were like, oh, this is so, so expensive. Uh, and, and that's when we met people like um, Joseph, uh, you know, who, who is an expert uh, in the industry. And we started realizing that solar has come a long, long way, mm-hmm. where today it is literally affordable. And it's, um, it's, it's going to be the way of the future. I, I truly believe that. And we were like, oh, this is great. And then we, 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 we stumbled on a fact that Malaysia is the third largest manufacturer of solar panels in the world. That's and we're right. like, what? <laughs> you know, like, like but yet home, <laughs> homegrown talent is not there. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Right? And uh, so you have all these big foreign companies investing in Malaysia and setting up their factories here. Um, and, and yet the, the, the local talent isn't there. And, one, and, the, and the local market was still very, very young. You know, and it was, it was growing, no doubt. Um, and then we started learning you know about how the government has introduced very cool systems through the feed-in tariff so you've got green tech promoting this and you've got seda who's taken over and they manage all of the um, um the, the well this renewable energy and, and with solar systems as an example so i was like okay great so there's this industry there's a gap there's a need and um, there's us there's us right. right and and we need to make our students relevant mm-hmm. uh, because IT again was an industry what uh, I, well IT maintenance so many people doing it now um, and so we picked on we we did a pilot so we're very lucky so um, uh, Ministry of Finance uh, uh, and their national strategy unit uh, had a program called VIP mm-hmm. uh, um, and through that program we, we pitched them and said we want to do a pilot project for a solar project so we did this two month pilot project we got support from them they brought volunteers from 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 all over the world um to to start this with us and we did a crash course and literally like after two months the first batch of i think it was 33 or 36 all of them got placed and we were like oh wow because we were struggling before that right with uh, to place them when they had it skills and we're like oh this is amazing and it was a pilot and then we were like, okay, wow, this is the way forward. And their age groups were between? Between um, 17 to, t- well, we accept from 17 to 29, but uh, traditionally uh, the age groups are between 17 to 22. Right. And what kind of jobs were this, uh, you know, exactly that they had been employed for? So prior to going into solar, um, we were doing um, English IT character development. Uh, so they would either get IT jobs mm-hmm. um, um, or they would get basic administrative jobs. So we had, uh, well, we admit an equal number of females. We actually had more females than we did uh, males. Yay. Yeah, <laughs> and and it, it's a fact. I mean, females are smarter than males. So anyhow. <laughs> well trained. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we'll get brownie yes, points today. Yes. <laughs> um, but, um, and, and so not, ev- not all, not everyone wanted to be a physical uh, uh, technician, right? Um, so they got into a lot of companies, mm-hmm. uh, they would do administrative stuff. A lot of people started liking, uh, um, um, engaging or enrolling or hiring our students because not only did they have the English, which was again a big gap now in Malaysia, but they also had the character and, and they were from the small city, so you found them a bit more nicer, friendlier, humble, 
uh, and hardworking. And mm -hmm. these are things that we instill very strongly uh, throughout the 24-month program that we used to have. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks to Solar, we've cut it down now to 12 months because we want to feed into the industry. Right. So we have an 18-month program where 12 months we train them. So we do. We still do English, IT, um, and so we work with JPK, right? That being the basic. The basic mm -hmm. um, and character development. And then we've added project management. We've, we realize actually to be a manager in any industry, you need to have project management skills. So why not give it to the kids now so that when they start working eventually as they um, um, cr you know they climb rank and file they can become managers because they've got the skills um, at and solar tech uh, and solar systems or solar PV mm -hmm. right um, and and that's really how this whole thing started so we do 12 months intensive training and then six months placement with the uh, with the industry players mm -hmm. um, and yeah it's it's been it's been really exciting so far so we should be graduating um, the first formal Class, batch yeah. um, in November you know and one of the things that was really fantastic after the pilot so we started talking to a number of people and JP Morgan Foundation mm -hmm. they came on board and said oh great so you guys are doing this and um, we had support from from AIM you know agency in Vasi Malaysia they like oh yeah there's this partner looking to fund something in technology for underprivileged you know, and so it was a perfect fit yeah you know and 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 JP Morgan is is big on on you know on on helping uh, underprivileged communities in countries that they work with and and it's just been an amazing partner to have mm -hmm. and and thanks to them we could really kick off this this amazing uh, uh, academy on uh, a nationwide yeah, uh, scale on a nationwide scale because we enroll kids from all over the country mm -hmm. um, you know and it's open for all Malaysians um, there is no requirement I mean you could have finished SPM you could have not finished SPM as long as you're 17 and you've got this desire and you really want to learn we would enroll you and now we're full in fact we've got places for 100 we have 116 students literally enrolled right now so our dormitories and everything is like cramped <laughs> Because they live there, eat there, study there. So right. it's, it's where, yeah. where exactly is uh, it's in Taman, Taman Sri Sina in Segambut. Mm -hmm. So we've got uh, two corner store, uh, two corner lots, mm -hmm. uh, six stories each. So we've got twelve floors of awesomeness. And so it's open to um, anyone uh, yes. really who who would like to be part of the program. Yes. Well, the waiting list is is huge now. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's, and we were really impressed because earlier we would struggle. Uh, to recruit getting students um, because there's so many IT providers out there, right? And unless people really knew who we are, and we're not one of those big colleges that promote or have these government loans, um, so the incentives were less. Uh, but Sola has, has been really an exciting journey uh, um, so far. So much so that um, about six months ago, we started talking to PPG mm -hmm. um, and they came on board um, and said we'll fund the Solar Lab. So we wanted to bring in very good quality equipment uh, which are expensive the equipment is expensive when you mean a solar lab what would you mean by so that? so we actually now have um, the equipment the tools of an actual solar photovoltaic or solar PV systems mm -hmm. we've got the grid tie which is stuff that is tied to the grid we've got off-grid we've got hybrid we've got an electric bicycle so mm -hmm. we generate Easy. our own electricity and we've got this uh, we're getting it sorry this huge EL tester uh, which is amazing like like it will be the only uh, actually the only non manufacturer to have these equipments um, and that's something that that we're very proud of because we can really give the kids first hand experience mm -hmm. and right? training and training mm -hmm. well of course this opens a hu huge new world to yes. to you as well did you ever think that you would get into something this vast or this big as the sun literally mm, yeah literally um well, so from young, right? You, when I, I love to study leaders and and, and and how people make it. And you look at all the big early age uh, billionaires and industrialists. They all went into energy, right? So mm -hmm. it would be fossil fuel, oil and gas. And I was like, damn, I wish I could do that. But <laughs> I mean, it's 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 crazy. You can't do uh, uh, oil and gas now. All the big companies are doing it in big big. Um, uh, bil uh, billionaires and I was like how am I going to get into this industry because that's something that the world will forever need um, so yeah did I ever see myself in solar energy when I first saw it on TV because they use it for NASA right to go to the wood I was like no because okay. it was uh, but but it, like I said now every day I wake up and it's just it's just so exciting to see what the future can hold. Mm -hmm. I mean, at SOLS, we do many, many things. So we've got 12 programs, right? We do um, English. We've done a nationwide program called BIM, Bahasa Inggris Atom Malaysia with the Ministry of Finance, that's NSU, right. Ministry of Education, and all the partners. And that's something that we're very passionate. That's our first love, English. Um, but we do health, we do mental health, we do um, 
community libraries. So we've set up libraries in, in poor villages and mm -hmm. communities. And there's just so many things that we've, we've ventured into. Um, but solar is one of the very, very uh, exciting things just because you get to play a part in, 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 in something that you directly consume daily. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think would be the next steps uh, for, for the institution or the Solar yeah. Academy? So um, so when we started it and, and the pilot was successful and, and we were supplying it to industry players and we're like, hmm, why don't we set up our own social enterprise? Right. You know, so then we set up a, a company called Salts Energy um, and the whole... and. And we were like, okay, let's just try this out. And we were really uh, pleased because people believe in us. You know, because traditionally people think, oh, you're an NGO. Are you sure you can do this? And I've always been advocating that, listen, you always have large corporations mm -hmm. who go and then become uh, and do philanthropy and set up their foundations. But you never have large NGOs who then go into very big businesses, right? They either set up cafe, they do handicraft, and, and that's it. Right. Or they sell cookies. But, I mean, honestly, that's not going to make you fully self-sustainable. Mm -hmm. You know, you need to generate income in the hundreds of thousands or in the millions to make to be sustainable forever so you're making groundbreaking yeah, changes yeah 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 and and, uh, and so from small fish to big pond literally yeah, literally mm -hmm. and uh, so we set up a company uh, and we were very blessed we had some uh, very good people who believed in us uh, some very big players in the well very big individuals i would say uh, in malaysia mm -hmm. uh, who gave us the chance to to start providing solar for their homes mm -hmm. and uh, it's been an amazing ride like like you know, people have come on board said, oh, okay, I would like to put solar in my house. And it's always the same question. Oh, it's so expensive. And I'm like, no, it's actually not. And, and I tell people now, it's actually cheaper now to have a solar system, a solar PV system. I keep saying solar system, sorry. <laughs> you can't have all the planets, sorry. Um, <laughs> to have solar PV system or to have solar energy right. in your home. And within four to five years, you get your return on investment. And for the next 25 years, you enjoy literally, well, free or fully, well, a lot, a great amount of subsidized uh, energy. Well, I'm going to hold you there because I know a lot of viewers are going, what? What, <laughs> what did you say? So perhaps you could explain to us exactly what Sol Solar would, would do when sure. it comes to, to this. So what Sol's Energy does is, so we go to a house, right? We look at your roof. We make sure there's no shading, there's no cover. And we then, um, um, well, we call it consultation. So we tell you mm -hmm. what we can do for you. Mm -hmm. So we can provide solar energy systems. So literally, we can actually provide energy for your home, which is true solar. Uh, we can do thermal, which is very, very common in Malaysia. I think most bungalows have a thermal system, and we, we do that as well. Um, we have solar lights, so you can have spotlights, which are solar powered. Um, and these are things that people always think is expensive yeah. and, and complicated. It's not. So what you if know. it's a, just a general home? Yeah, uh, even a terrace no house, right? As long as, so this is what uh, one of our early on uh, campaigns was, make your roof work for you, right? So everyone's got a roof, right? Well, not everyone, sorry. Many people have a roof. And literally, if you've got a roof, you can put a solar panel on it. Mm -hmm. And if you look at countries like Germany, the whole, you know, they've gone solar powered. Now in France, right, either you have a solar roof or a green roof if you want to build any building. So, and everyone has seen that, and, and well, in the Europe and the US, how this is how the future should be. Mm -hmm. um, so, solar, uh, so the Solar Academy provides us with the students and provides us, so that allows us to be really, really cost effective. Right. Um, the industry in Malaysia is still uh, on the high side only because the manpower, most of the time, we have to bring in uh, from overseas. But even that, we have a solution yeah, for now. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Well, we've got a video we'd like to share with all our viewers. Let's take a quick look.
I guess family means to me feeling welcome, feeling at home. And for everyone here, well, this is family. It's all about making change. Joining souls is definitely one of the most rewarding things you'll do. Add the fact you will make a difference and that's what makes life here even better. You just need to talk to the people who work here. What I like about souls is that souls is consisted out of really, really motivated team of young people. Because people in your community, they really want you to be there. They really want you to work with them and they want to spend time with you. The reason I joined Source is because I see Source as a, as a platform to develop myself as a professional in the social sector and at the same time I can contribute to, to a better world. It's been a good change for me uh, and it's been a great one year and a good few months. Uh, looking forward for the future. They spend their whole day dedicated to just doing what they do best. Whether, whether you're in the field volunteering, teaching English, refurbishing computers, helping other NGOs, or in the office interning at headquarters, working one of our departments. We're all working towards the same thing, and that's, that's changing lives. I love Malaysia, I love it here. You get to live with the locals, experience the culture, try new foods, meet new friends, see new places. And there's, then there's the ultimate benefit of serving the hundreds of communities we help. During my first conversation with Anna in, in HR, um, she had mentioned that we had a, 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 a boy in the jungle and I said, man, that's where I want to go. And when I got here, it was beautiful. Uh, I fell immediately in love with the place, in love with the people. The people are very simple, very beautiful, uh, and all they want is to be educated. You could be in the jungle, be in the city, be in an island. It doesn't really matter because you still feel part of what's happening here and what we're doing. But if you are interested in doing something different with your life, challenging yourself, helping others, well then, then Souls is the place for you. There you have it, Souls 24-7 and Solar Academy, um, all happening right now. For those of you who might be interested, of course, you can log on to um, the website, souls247.org slash my. Otherwise, um, of course, on Facebook, Souls 247, uh, or, or on Twitter as well, yes. Souls 247. Um, how do you feel about uh, the journey so far? And uh, we can't have access to um, all the volunteers yeah. and all those who have really had, uh, you know, been advantaged from the program but what would you think they might have to say if they were in the studio with us today I think they would be I mean thrilled and excited um, uh, and thank you so much for showing that video like that was that was mind-blowing I know like when they watch this they're gonna go like wow <laughs> 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 uh, and but 
the team i mean really uh, the, we've got 257 full time staff now mm -hmm. and and people don't realize that even though as an ngo you can grow into this huge um organization and and we've been um, really blessed because uh, eighty percent of our team is international, so we've got internationals coming. We've got locals, and that mix between having internationals contributing to our country, bringing their experiences, their exposures, their cultures, and exchanging it with our multicultures and and experience, and it's just an amazing fusion of awesomeness, yeah. you know. And um, for me, it's really exciting. I mean, I've been doing this for sixteen and a half years, um, and every day is is you know, it's literally like a new day, and 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 we, and. I guess having this ambitious side of me where people always were like are you sure you're an NGO activist and you're not an entrepreneur I'm like hey I'm both mm -hmm. you know because I really think that you should blend both worlds it's not just about serving and, and then struggling with being sustainable and paying the bills and surviving and neither is it all about just making money and then in, in indirectly you hurt the environment or the people or, or literally just the whole situation so I was like why can't we blend to marry the both yeah, right? yeah I mean the 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 um, thought process behind it is of mm -hmm. course to be good and do good and yes. you've, you've really taken that and shown everyone I think you 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 were as far as your mind will stretch you to go I mean, yes. the sky is the limit it, literally it is and and I also want to show that um, Malaysian NGOs can do this you know you it's not just the big European ones the Western ones it's you Malaysians ourselves we're very generous we're very giving um, um, and we're willing to dedicate our time um, and a lot of people don't know this I mean as you know if you looked at, at the police at the army we've served all over the world mm -hmm. and now it's time where the public the people themselves have these opportunities to go out and serve and make a difference mm -hmm. um, and that's something that that um, that really excites me. I'm still very young, so you know I've got a lot of a long years way to go. And we look long. forward to looking um, at what Souls 24/7 and you and the rest of the team uh, will have uh, planned out in the future. But mm -hmm. before I let you go, uh, Tiraj, I wanted to talk to you about youth. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of uh, you know a lot of things are being said about our youth currently that uh, they are not uh, you know as uh, empowered or as ambitious. Uh, they have uh, they're very picky and this and that. Lots being said about Gen Y, but you have faced time with them. And what would you like to say? about about our youth and perhaps towards the seniors or the elders, they are are they being misunderstood? Um, so it's it's well it's it's a very broad question and and I've always spoken about youth development. So there's two youths. You've got the urban youths and then you've got the rural youths. Mm -hmm. And then you can further dissect that with the urban educated youths and the urban uneducated and the same with the rural, right? Um, and in many ways, yes, they are they are misunderstood. I mean, we are we are at the time where technology has taken over, uh, and we understand the youth, the, the millennials understand it best. Um, the older generations are just getting to 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 grasp it mm -hmm. over time, uh, and are and and they find it challenging to understand technology. Um, but I also feel that 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 the youths. Like we're always either giving them just one stream of ways. Like, okay, go and do. So Malaysia is big on social entrepreneurship now, right? right? Like, there's all these incubators and stuff. But there's so many other sectors that we're leaving behind. Mm -hmm. So we're not actually allowing our youth to go into other sectors. Like, why don't you right. go volunteer, mm -hmm. right? Why don't you get involved with different causes? Why don't you get involved with the environment, right? Malaysia is a beautiful green place, but if we don't do something about it, it's not going to remain green. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to fall into the, 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 the traps that other developed nations took when they forgot about the green. And, and that's also why solar energy, right? Like, like we've got to stop focusing on fossil fuel, right? It's going to come to an end. The research is there. Everything is there. And we've got the sun, right? And we've got the sun shining down on <laughs> us, on the youth, on Malaysia. Yeah. And I think if I could, if could sum that up, the youth really do hold the key uh, to uh, our, our nation's future and, and success. That is and true. on that note, I'd like to thank you and thank you so much. everyone at Souls 24-7. Thank uh, you. And all the best to Solar Academy. We hope to hear more from you. Thank you so much. And yeah, it was, it was fantastic being on the show. Our pleasure. Well, that's all the time we have with T. Raj. But do stay tuned. We have our next guest in the studio right after these few messages to talk more on solar energy in Malaysia. Stay tuned.